Hi, I'm Dala, and today we're taking a quick look at how I usually mount CAN bridges. This video will be helpful if you're planning to install a CAN bridge on your own, or if you're a customer of mine and want to find the location where the CAN bridge is located so you can update the firmware. Let's get to it. To start off with, there are two versions of the older 24kW leaf. They are easy to distinguish. The older model has a light interior, and the newer model has a black interior. Why do I make this distinction? Because the wiring is significantly different between these two generations. Today we are taking a look at my own leaf, which has the dark interior, but I can also show you hints for the light interior. On these newer models, I put the CAN bridge for doing battery upgrades behind this panel right here. So there are normally fuses behind this cover can be easily removed with a plastic tool. Uh, as you can see here, I have the CAN bridge quite <laughs> sloppily installed because I remove this one quite often. So if this were a customer car, it would be more secure. But here is where you find it. Up next, I can show you where I patch into the CAN wiring harness on these newer models. It is behind this cover right here. So with the panel removed, here you can see where I have spliced into the EV can. The blue wire is uh, can high and the green wire is can low. This is a bit ugly looking because this was the first car I ever did, so uh, my crimping skills have uh, improved a bit since, the, since this. Uh, you can also solder or crimp this wire. It, I would prefer crimping, but yeah. To power the bridge, I use the constant 12 volt that goes into the OBD2 port. This is a yellow wire, I'll put up a picture on screen what it looks like. Ground can be taken from any bolt that goes into the chassis, or also from behind the OBD2 port. And uh, that's it for this version of the leaf. Now the light version is a bit different. Uh, the best location to splice into the EV can is uh, behind this cover right here. I'll put also up some pictures on screen. I mount the CAN bridges behind the cup holders. So that is this section of the plastic and it simply pulls up so you can remove that to access the CAN bridge. Uh, I can also put some pictures up on screen of that right now. So that is where to look if you have the light version. Okay, so let's walk through the steps on how to update the firmware running on the CAN bridge. I've switched to a desktop based setup to more easily show you what's going on. So just pretend like this were on, installed on a car. So here on the left we have the CAN bridge and here we have the Atmel Avrisp Mark II flasher. So in order to flash the bridge we need to remove this top cover from it. So let's unplug this power cable and let's remove the tape that is usually found here to keep it intact. And now we can remove the top cover. So here on the bottom you can see the flasher port. So this is where this um, programming cable attaches to. Like so. And then uh, to be able to flash it, it needs constant power. So I'm just gonna plug this cable right back in. And as you can see, this LED here at the bottom went from red to green, and that means that flashing can now commence. Okay, so here is how to do the flashing. I'm using a Windows 10 based laptop, and I have already downloaded the Atmel Studio 7. There is a link to that in the description. So I have the Avrisp programmer plugged into the computer and it is also connected to the CAN bridge. So now I can start up the Atmel Studio. And here from the toolbar I will select Tools and then Device Programming. And uh, it has already detected my uh, Avrisp programmer and this is important to have the correct device. Uh, this CanBridge 3 port version is using an ATX Mega 32C4 CPU. So now I just press apply and I can read the device signature and check the target voltage. It should, it should be 3.3 volts, so that is working. So now that we know that it can read the device, we can flash it. So for that we go to the memory section and uh, here in this section you select 
which firmware you want to flash. I have already selected this uh, Cambridge version 2.06.hex file. So now we are all set to go. I just press program, boom, and it erased the application section, did a few checks, programmed, and we are okay. If you see anything else than all these four OKs, then something went wrong. But if it looks like this, everything is fine, and your Cambridge is now better than before. Okay, I think that wraps up this video. There are still some differences for the ENV200, but I don't have any pictures or videos of that, unfortunately. So that will have to wait for another video. Thanks for watching.